An incredible day for Stonecrest, an amazing day for DeKalb County, and an impactful day for New Birth. I am here with two of the titans to help make this happen. Thousands of young people from around the area are coming and receiving once-in-a-lifetime college scholarships. Yesterday, we started with $3 million being awarded. Today, who knows? But before we leave, Eight million in total is gonna be released. We've come a long way. When I graduated mayor, my church gave us a hundred dollars for book scholarships. Uh, so to hear these young people getting twenty thousand and full rides for those who otherwise would have never had an opportunity is absolutely awe-inspiring. It's unblank, and we give God glory. You know, a lot of opportunities for people our age, even though we don't look it, a little older, didn't have, we didn't have those opportunities when we were younger. So they, they actually had these opportunities, and I think it's something that's great for all the kids that are going to college. This is so significant. The Bloomberg report uh, issued out the data that America now leading contributor to debt is not credit card, but student loan debt. So for $8 million to be given out in uh, college scholarships in three days, is gonna be meaningful and impactful for so many families around DeKalb County. Just had the opportunity to spend some time talking to Chinook Banerjee. And he has driven all the way from O'Fallon, Missouri with his mother and his brother. And uh, they came all the way into the city and to New Birth Missionary Baptist Church today to the scholarship fair to really see how many opportunities that he would have the opportunity to take away. And so he's just presented me with a scholarship offer from Alabama A&M University in the amount of $106,000, $106,504. You got some scholarship offers in your hand? I do. I just got offered $120,000 from Delaware State University. Wait, 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 wait. What, what did you say? I just got offered $120,000 from Delaware State University. $120,000. I want you to just look in the camera. Um, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant is watching this along with the church membership here at New Birth. And they just want to hear from you how thankful you are just to know that the church here in this city has been able to produce high, quali high quality scholarship opportunities for youth like yourselves. Just say something to the church to let them know how much you appreciate the work that they're doing. It feels very validating that the work I put into this can be like um, recognized in this way because quite literally you can achieve anything if you work for it and this kind of shows it and I'm very thankful that I got the opportunity to get the scholarship that I did from this church and these colleges. This is an overwhelmingly exciting moment uh, for me as pastor. Uh, I am a high school dropout uh, who got a GED and by the grace of God got into Morehouse College. Uh, and so whenever young people have an opportunity for higher learning and higher education, I think it as sacred. Uh, and I was able to do it, hear this, with both parents with a doctorate degree. So that was in an environment that valued education. I shudder to think where I would be if I didn't. And so the throngs of young people who are coming from Atlanta Metro are really stepping into limitless possibilities that they may not have had at home, that they may have never seen, but will give them a way of escape. And we want to show young people in Atlanta, you don't have to dribble a basketball or throw a football or rap in order to be successful. But a mind is a terrible thing to waste in a slogan, it's a decision. Good morning, Newburgh! 
serve. It may be cold outside, but we about to make it hot in here. It's time to wake up, rise, and shine. We here live in Stonecrest, Georgia. It's the EG Takeover. We about to go up on a Sunday in the church. Welcome to the stage. Redeem. <laughs> feel like we're defeated but in the spirit we've got the victory I am on my winning thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Christ Jesus I am on my way put a beat in your air if you're feeling victorious you ready new birth let's go yeah all these W's we getting trophies all these haters got opinions they don't know me I am so New York that you can call me Sony. Uh, 24 to put in work, I learned that piece from Kobe. Uh, uh, I am not under the law, I'm not Jacoby. Name is Kunta Kente, no, you cannot call me Toby. Free from all the masters in the past who tried to hold me. No longer a servant, my man Jesus called me homie. Yeah. I don't feel like y'all feeling victorious in this place. Yeah. Can y'all turn it up a little bit in the monitors? I need to hear the victory come through. Yeah. Let's make them feel it outside. Hey, I, I am on my, my winning streak. Hey, I'm, I'm coming, coming for the crown. It's real easy. Say, I, I am on my winning streak. streak. Tell the devil, say, you can't, can't shut me down. down. Hey, hey, second verse. Woo! I ain't really focused on the obstacles. Really going after the impossible. Giving him the glory in his proper due. He changed all your power like a locker room. Ain't no weapon for that will prosper, dude. Really gotta ask what is stopping you. Speaking all his words like a cockatoo. And now we winning, winning, winning. Can't stop the crew. Yeah, feeling like a Robert Ori rocking all these rings. You can never stop my story. Only turn the page. Those who wait upon the Lord said he will give you wings. His eye is on the sparrow. He's the reason why I sing. We gotta keep breaking it down till I feel a praise in this place. Somebody that's been feeling defeated, open up your mouth uh, and give God glory like you know you've got the victory. So I, I am on my head. I'm coming for the crown. Who's coming for the crown? Say, so I am on my winning streak. This is real easy. Put a V in the air. If you in the comments, put a peace sign. Say, I've got the victory. Got the victory. Said, I. God got the victory, said I'm on, I'm on a winning streak, I'm on, on a winning, hey, hey, I'm God, got the victory, I'm God, got the victory, I'm on, on a winning streak, I'm on, on a, break it down, say, I'm God, got the, I don't hear you on this side. Said I'm on, on a, hey, let Howard University feel you. Tell them they got the victory. Let Morris Brown feel you. Tell them they got the victory. Let every HBCU that's underfunded feel you. Tell them they got the victory. Somebody open up your mouth and give God glory for the victory. Somebody say, I am on my winning streak. No, the clarity say, I am on my winning streak. Somebody shout perpetual victory. Put a V in the air for perpetual victory. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, new bird. Thank you, China. My name is Isaiah Slaughter, and we are here again to welcome you to the latest, to the liveest college takeover Sunday there is. With that being said, I want all of my college millennials to get up off that sofa. I want you to go grab a friend, go grab a sister, go grab a brother, and I want y'all to tag, I want you to share, and I want you to comment. And when you get done, 
done tagging, when you get done sharing, and when you get done commenting, we want you to find another friend, another individual, someone who really been on your mind this whole week. And we want you to show them some love, show them some passion, and we want you to show them some peace. And with that being said, pass the peace, peace Newberg. Good morning and welcome to New Birth. I need everybody in the building to make some noise. Yeah. Everybody that's oh. watching this morning, it's time for you to like, it's time for you to comment and share this great experience. It's time to worship Jesus. I've got good news for you today. What is it? Better is coming to your house. Hey. You ought to type that on the screen. Better is coming to my house. Come on, everybody, let's celebrate. Come on. Hey. Better is coming to my house. Better is coming to your house. Let's go. Hey.
is better than good to all of us. If that's your testimony, I want you to type it right now, better than good. Everybody in this room, shout out loud, better than good. That's the kind of God we serve. If you look at what God has done over the last seven days, you owe him a praise. You owe him a shout. You owe him a clap. You owe him a holler. You sound like he's just been all right. But if he's been better than good, come on, let me hear the sound of thanksgiving in this room. Come on, one more time. He's been better than good. abundantly beyond what we can think, dream, hope, or even imagine. Everybody just shout out, better than good. That's the kind of God that we serve. It's going to be better than good. And I'm telling you, this week, God has shown himself strong. There's not been a day that God has uh, hopscotched over of those who are under the canopy of new birth. And for that, I am overwhelmingly grateful. I got to give you just a couple of quick testimonies about how good our God has been. This is our Emerging Generation Sunday, and we're saluting all of our young people, all of our millennials, all of our Gen Z. Would you clap your hands uh, for all of those that encompass uh, the future of the body of Christ and all the more? of the future of new birth. Uh, this week, and I need you all to tear the studio up, tear your living room up, uh, I discovered that student loan debt is greater than credit card debt. Student loan debt, y'all ain't gonna believe it, is higher than mortgage debt. The number one area of debt holding in this country is for those who had to finance their education. And this week, in partnership uh, with Infinity, in partnership uh, with Stonecrest, in partnership with DeKalb County, I need y'all to go crazy. This week, in just three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, for Atlanta Metro students, we gave out eight million dollars in scholarships come on y'all got to do better than that y'all didn't hear what i just said eight million dollars in scholarships Every schooler in this county pulled up on our campus this week, and many walked away with presidential scholarships, with full scholarships, room and board paid for, simply because they showed up. They did not have to be a member of our church. Y'all not saying nothing here. They didn't even have to be Christian, but because they were access to what it is that God has put in this ministry, Eight million dollars was issued out uh, to young and deserving students who are on their way to being history makers and world changers. I got to go a step further. I found out just two weeks ago that there is another water crisis that is going on in Michigan. Uh, we learned about it first in Flint, Michigan, where thousands upon thousands found themselves consuming contaminated water, uh, and the whole nation pointed its down direction towards Flint, Michigan. And yet now, another city is finding itself, Benton Harbor, Michigan, is finding itself with contaminated water. They've been calling out for Congress and for Senate and for the governor to intervene uh, to very slow response. Uh, the people of that city sent New Birth a letter, and I want you to see this video to see what God has done this week. Hey, this is Pastor Dalton Lynch, and I want to take out this time this opportunity to thank my big brother, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, and the New Birth family. When I put the call out last week that we needed water, I want to thank New Birth for being the first responders and sending water, sending aid to our city and to our residents. So on behalf of myself and the incredible staff of the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, I want to just take out this moment to say thank you. I really was trying to find a new birth t-shirt, but I couldn't get one here long enough. I rock with you all. I'll see y'all in a minute.
Bless the Lord. I am grateful that while that whole town is under siege of contaminated and lead-filled water, new birth, I need you to give God glory. We sent tractor trailers filled with water to Ben Harbor, Michigan this week uh, to be a black. Come on, y'all got to do better than that. That, that's the kind of God we serve, and that's the kind of ministry we represent. I'm telling you, if you missed last week, you played yourself. Last week was a historic and a monumental move of God that happened right here on our campus. Uh, we had cheerleaders. We had Battle of the Band. Uh, we had alumnus. We had babies and strollers and old people in wheelchairs. Everybody was rolling on last week on the grass, uh, and I am just excited. If you were here last week and you were blessed, would you make some noise right now? I got to tell you what happened. Our aim, our endeavor, our hope, and our faith uh, was for $700,000 on that Sunday. Uh, last week, I needed to pause, and I wanted to publicly appreciate you for your connectedness and for your steadfastness in the covenant that you made to God. Many of you were off your financial schedule. Many of you were on travel. Uh, many of you, quite frankly, you just forgot. Uh, but I wanted to thank you. And New Birth, I need y'all to come tear the club up. Let Last week, we raised on one Sunday, above tithes and offerings, $535,000. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I know our God is able to do anything but fail. So here's what I need you to do. Those of you who made a covenant, those of you who made a covenant, I need you to honor it on today uh, because next week we on to the next one. Those of you who made a vow of what it is that you were going to give, I need you to please honor it today and I want you to do it uh, in this moment. In order for us to fill in that short gap, it's not going to take much. 50 people right now, if you'll sow a seed of 1,000, 50 people, if you'll sow a seed of 1,000, if 100 people will sow a seed of 700, and if 300 people can give a seed of 300. Let me give it to you again as you run to go find your debit card, go find your credit card. You still got some left on there. 50 people, if you'll sow a seed of 1,000, 100 people, you're sowing a seed of 700. 300 of you, if you'll give a seed of 300, we'll be able to meet our goal and do it today before we slide into November. I need you to do that. Now hear this, what is critical and what is important for you to be mindful of is this is above your tithes and offerings. This is separate from your tithes and offerings. How many of you know God loves a cheerful giver? How many of you have seen God prosper you in the pandemic? You act like you don't have any testimonies. Anybody know you've never seen the right just forsaken, never seen his seed begging for bread. This is for honest people that can keep it 100. How many of us, I said us, I'm speaking in inclusive language. How many of us gained weight in the pandemic? You gained, that's how good God is. Uh, even while stores was closed, the refrigerator was still open. That, that, that's the kind of God we serve. I, I want you to give God the evidence of your gratitude and your thanksgiving. I'm charging and I'm challenging you to tithe. We only have a few weeks left in this year, um, but I'm believing that God is going to do some things before December 31st. Those of you who are tithers, those of you who are sowing that sacrificial seed for our bond at 700, all of our giving platforms are beneath me in this moment. So whether you're giving through push pay, whether you're doing it through text to give, whether you're doing it through Givelify, or whether you are mailing it in, I need you to please add adhere to it and do it immediately. I know you think you're going to remember, uh, but you are going to forget. You got to do it right now. You're going to forget. Don't even trust your memory. Do you know how long ago you made up in your mind that you were going to give some clothes to the goodwill and that bag been in your trunk for three months? 
you are not going to remember. I need you to please make sure, make sure that you give that tab. Do not trust your memory or yourself for what it is that you know that you are not competent to remember. I need you to sow that seed right now. And again, those of you who are in that bond 700, uh, help your pastor exceed the deadline. Help us exceed the goal. 50 of you, I need you to sow that seed of 1,000. 100 of you, I need you to sow a seed of 700. 300 of you, I I need you to sow a seed of 300. God is going to do some amazing things. New birth, clap your hands if you're excited about what God is doing in our church. Come on, you got to do better than that. If you're excited about what God is doing in our church and doing in our ministry. I keep telling you over and over again, we are a local church making a global impact. Uh, so global is the impact that we're making. Uh, we're in our studio with just about 50 of us in the room. Uh, and uh, my team uh, uh, came and said to me, Pastor, uh, we got to make room. We've got five ladies that came all the way from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, just to worship with us today. Uh, y'all Y'all from Jacksonville, would y'all stand? Where y'all from Jacksonville? Come on, y'all give it up from, from First Timothy. Thank you so very much for worshiping. We're so honored to have you. Those of you who are worshiping with us from around the world, ask that you will please type in the chat uh, where you're watching and where you're worshiping from. Uh, this coming Tuesday, I am going to be uh, sharing the word of God from you from this studio, this Tuesday at 7.30. Uh, but I need you to know that on Tuesday morning, I am praying with you. How many of you have been a part of our morning prayers, uh, both on the phone line and on uh, social media? This Tuesday, I will be here in the studio, but next Tuesday is going to be absolutely crazy. Next Tuesday is going to be crazy. Let me be a Baptist preacher for a minute. Look at your name and say, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is going to be absolutely crazy. Next Tuesday is going to be unbelievable, unimaginable, because this Tuesday, I'll be here in the studio giving you Bible study. Uh, but I need you to know, next Tuesday, I am doing Bible study live from Turks and Caicos. Next Tuesday, we're going to be live from Turks and Caicos. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Uh, the nation, the, the island of Turks and Caicos, asked us to come and do service live from there. Uh, and so we're going there as a guest of the government. All of you who are on the island, uh, I want you to please meet us. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And let me say to you, if you are on an island that's not Turks and Caicos and you need for me to come, I am available. If you need me, I feel the Holy Spirit bringing me to Hawaii. I don't know why it is. Uh, if you are anywhere in the Maldives and you need the Holy Ghost to come, I am available. Uh, so uh, we, we can do an island tour. So long, bye-bye uh, is what I am singing to Jonathan because he is not coming. I just need all of you to please come. Uh, today is an amazing day. Our young people are taking over. I'm the oldest person on the program, so I got to get out of here. Uh, we've got Got an amazing guest uh, that I want uh, to introduce to you today. This young lady is a young man is 14 years old. Uh, he's a producer. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. Many of you remember him from America's Got Talent. Uh, he is amazingly gifted, uh, and uh, he is from Maryland. So I know he's going to represent. Uh, represent. He's going to represent because uh, y'all know the best singers come from Maryland. Yes, I ain't even going to go there, but the best singers come from Maryland. It's all right, Tiffany. You, you've you been to Maryland, so it's all right. Uh, so I want you to help me warmly welcome this amazing young man who is going to uh, bless us in a remarkable way. Would you stand to your feet, make some noise, cheer, scream, yell, and holler for Kelvin Dukes.
held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all darkest night you are closer than ever I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Come on, sing it with me now. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me, yeah. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything, oh. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful, yes, he has. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Thank you so much Can you declare that all over the building? Your goodness is running after me. Oh, I don't hear y'all in here. I think that that's something that we ought to whisper to ourselves all day, every day. Going into the week, your goodness is running after me. Listen, I'm reminded by the young brother who was just with us worshiping. Listen, that God has a remnant of those in this generation that will not bow to anything but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, y'all are quiet in here. That God has some reserve that know that he is the king of kings that he is the lord of lords and that there is nobody else who they will worship greater than the lord jesus christ and we are grateful because there has been a generation that has been rescued from the hand of the enemy oh y'all quiet not everybody is on drugs not everybody is on alcohol not everybody has decided to go a different path but we know that there are those who love god and have submitted their lives to him that they may change the course of our world by ensuring that people will know that Jesus Christ still lives. 
Yeah, that he still lives and he is still saved. Listen, we are so grateful to be here, right here at New Birth for our EG Fifth Sunday service. EG, make some noise. We are so grateful to be here. Can we just honor our pastor, our senior leader, who understands the power of ensuring that young people are equipped? None other than Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. We love our pastor and we are so grateful for his vision to ensure that all of our youth, all of our young adults and millennials have a place in this ministry where they are valued. Come on here, where their verse voices are heard and for that we are so grateful. Listen, one of the things that we understand about being in college outside of gaining the freshman 15, uh-huh, and eating ramen noodles, uh-huh, is sometimes, most times, you broke. Can I get an amen? <laughs> you might not have everything that you need. And we understand that a part of that, so many students struggle to get home for the holidays. Do you know in some families, a, pr a plane ticket is so expensive that sometimes they stay on campus because they cannot leave. And so this year, we want to sponsor two college students to go home for the holidays. Is that okay? Oh, y'all can do better than that. We want to make sure that we send them home for the holidays to be with their families. And so students, in order to do that, we are extending our plane ticket giveaway. So we're extending our competition all the way to November 30th, okay? So listen, all you have to do is go to the New Birth website and apply. We will follow up with you, but we want to make sure that you go home. Is that good for everybody? Hallelujah. Listen, the next voice that you will hear after praise and worship is one of my favorite preachers. Can I just tell you, one of my favorite women in ministry, and I'm going to tell you why. Not only is she kind, not only is she humble, but she is a five-foot powerhouse. Do you hear me? Listen, she carries the word of the Lord in her belly. She is astute and she is theologically sound. She is going to walk you through the book of the Lord today and make sure that you have a transformational experience. Listen, if you're not familiar with Pastor Shalandria Taylor from Houston, Texas... I guarantee you that after today you will be. We are so grateful for the woman of God. And that will be the next voice you hear after our incredible praise and worship team. Father, we give you worship this morning. It's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. It's nothing like presence lord all i want is to be with you it's nothing like your presence lord all i want is to be with you come on say it it's nothing like your presence lord all i want is to be everybody say that come on it's nothing like your presence lord all i want is to be with you yeah 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 it's nothing like your presence lord all i Come on, say it. Everybody say it. All I want to do is worship. Yeah. I'll lift my hand and worship you. I'll lift my voice and worship you. Nothing like yes. your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. It's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Say it. it's nothing like your presence. Everybody say it. All I want is to worship That's it all over the house, in your house as well. Come on, say it. It's to worship you. That's what I come to do. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is worship, worship you. Come on, you are God. And we worship. Come on, say it, say it. You are God. And we worship. Come on, everybody say it. Use your 
your voice and say it. And we worship. Lift your hands and say it. Come on. You are God. So what are you going to do? And we worship. So we lift our hands. Jesus right now, wherever your hear is, in your car, on your cell phone, your iPad, your television, your living room, just begin to worship Jesus wherever you are, because this morning, I will bless the Lord, that's what I'm going to do. Lift your praise and say, I will bless the Lord. Come on, everybody, lift your worship this morning. What are you going to do? I will bless the Lord. I can't hear you in the building. It's time to lift your worship and say, I will bless the Lord. With everything in me, with everything in me, I will bless the Lord. the next 30 seconds will you do what the song says and bless the name of the Lord come on Psalm 47 says clap your hands all all ye people we clap because he's good come on we clap because he's great we clap because we acknowledge him we clap because he's alpha we clap because he's omega we clap because he's the beginning and we clap because he's the end we clap because he's sovereign we clap because he's holy we clap because he is I am that I am and everything in between the next verse is my favorite verse it says to shout unto God with the voice of triumph that ain't for everybody just a few people who recognize that my victory lies in Jesus underneath that mask for the next 30 seconds will you let the devil know that I got a testimony and that testimony is out of all that I've been through I'm still 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 here clap those hands and open up your mouth and give God praise hallelujah we are so excited 
excited to be here in the house in the presence of the Lord. We are so glad to be here and celebrating with the New Birth family. Will you help me give God praise for our leader and our pastor, Dr. Brian? We say praise the Lord. And I'm so appreciative. Uh, I honor who you are and honor your journey in getting to where you are. And I'm so grateful. One thing I say everywhere is nobody uh, has to invite you anywhere. Come on, somebody. Uh, but I'm so grateful to be here tonight, uh, this morning. Let's go quickly to the word of the Lord. We give God praise for every pastor and uh, all of those who are here, everybody, those from in and far and far and away. We say praise the Lord. Uh, Judges chapter 16, verse 28 through the 30th. I don't have a lot to say, but here is where I believe that the Lord wants to speak to us this morning. Judges 16. I want to read it out of the New Living Translation, verse 28 through 30th. And it reads, Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held the temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistines, rulers and all of the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. For the next few moments of your time, I want to minister from the subject, I won't die here. Do me a favor and look at somebody and say, neighbor, I won't die here. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I won't die here. We're ministering to our youth and young adults this morning. And for those of us who are not you get to tune in praise God uh, judges uh, judges we are reading out of the book of judges and it is the time period before the monarchy uh, the the reigning theme throughout the book of judges is that uh, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and then he had to raise up a judge in order to put them back in position to put them in right standing what we have come to learn and understand about uh, these children of Israel is that even though they were God chosen God's chosen people uh, that they were just uh, dissatisfied with God. Uh, they were not satisfied with him delivering them from Egypt. They were not satisfied with him fighting their battles. They were not satisfied being who they are. And what we learn is that uh, when you are no longer satisfied with God, you start to allow your flesh to make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you are no longer satisfied with God, you start looking at other people. You start looking, and particularly the children of Israel started looking at other nations around them, and they wanted so badly to be a part of something that they were willing to give up the God uh, just to get what other people had. And this is a danger because if you are not careful, what God has allowed you to conquer will soon conquer you because uh, they were not satisfied. Again, whatever you do not get by faith, you will obtain by lust. Whatever you do not get by faith, you will obtain by lust. Understand that faith is the conviction that God will do it. But lust says, I know he's going to do it, but I want it in my time and not in his. And this is here is where we see the problem with the children of Israel. Now, I want us to go to Judges chapter 13, where we are first introduced to this man named Samson. There are three phases in Samson's life that I want us to deal with today. And we're going home. Three phases. The first phase is foundation. The second phase is self destruction and the third phase is redemption we have foundation self-destruction and redemption we are introduced to the first phase of his life uh in judges chapter 13 where the bible says that the spirit of the lord speaks an angel comes and speaks to his mother who could not have children but she speaks to him and tells him that he is she is getting ready to bear a son now something specific about foundation our foundation is where we get the beginning our foundation is where we learn our a B, C's and one, two, threes. Our foundation is where we learn that uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Our foundation is where we learn that there are 66 books of the Bible. Our foundation is where we learn Genesis 1 and 1. But if you do not have a proper foundation, it is going to be difficult for you to build on anything. Hmm? So he has a foundation. The Bible says this, one of my favorite verses. He tells the mother, listen, you are getting ready to have a son. Hmm? Not only are you getting ready to have a son, but I'm getting ready to give you 
you instructions on what to do when the boy gets here, which is unheard of uh, because nobody gets instructions on the child before they come here. But the Bible says that he gives her an instruction. He says, listen, number one, he's going to be a Nazarite. Uh, three things that a Nazarite could not do. They could not cut their hair. They could not drink strong drink. You know, strong drink. They could not drink strong drink and they could not eat or be around anything dead. But the Bible did not just give the mother instruction on what to do with the child. The Bible also gives the mother instruction on what she can do while she is bearing the child. Uh, one of the most fascinating relationships, I believe, uh, is the relationship between the mother and the unborn child. Why? Because the wellness of the child is predicated on how well the mother can follow instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not this church, the church down the street, that maybe the reason why our children mm, uh, are going crazy is because somebody didn't follow proper instruction. Mm -hmm. Maybe the reason why we are having so many identity crises is because somebody did not follow proper instruction. Now, uh, I looked at something and I paid attention when I was reading Dr. Bryant. What I understood uh, was that when a woman goes through morning sickness, uh, all her body was doing was warning her of the toxins that she was about about to bring into her body that could potentially harm the baby hmm? and there are some of us that God has given people in our lives now one thing I want you to know is that you are not responsible for your own foundation hmm? our leaders our parents uh, those who have ruled over us are responsible for our foundations but in this particular text we see that not only is she responsible his father responsible for the foundation he also has to obey uh, the instruction of that foundation so so maybe you are not one of the parents uh, uh, that, that mis misconcepted and misconstrued the information, but maybe you are one of those parents that were like Samson's parents, that did everything that they could have possibly done to make sure that the boy followed in the right path, but somehow he still got off. Now, uh, I want to go into our second phase, which is uh, self-destruction. I want to go uh, to Judges chapter 14, the very next chapter, the very first verse. What you will see here is that the Bible... Bible says, uh, and Samson went down to Timnah. What I want you to understand is that Timnah is Philistine territory. Mm? I want you to look at the text. The Bible says, and Samson went down. Mm? Uh, this is the second phase of his life where Samson's a little bit older now, and, and he's tired of being under his parents' covering. Mm? You could say he went off to college. He was out away from his parents, and the Bible said that when he left, he went down. Now, I want you to know that he not not only went down uh, geographically, hmm, but he also went down spiritually. Uh, prove it in the text. The Bible says that he looks at a woman from Timnah. Now, it was forbidden for Israelites to mix with uh, Philistines. It was forbidden for uh, the, the saved to mix with the unsaved. Come on, somebody. Understand that he did not care about who he was hooking up with. Now, uh, can I help you? If you have to uh, go down in order to connect with somebody, then maybe they're not the right one for you. If, if, if you have to dumb yourself down in order to make them feel good about themselves, then maybe you need to reevaluate where you are going. The Bible says that he looks at, and I'm done, the Bible says that he looks at a woman and tells his parents, he did not ask his parents, he tells his parents, I need you to go get her for me. And his parents are confused because he's like, wait a minute, you don't want none of these uh, fine, young, sanctified uh, Israelites? He said, no. Hmm? Uh, he wasn't attracted to the church girls. Come on, somebody. Uh, he was attracted, come on, uh, the Bible says that uh, 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 literally he was attracted to something that was, translates to forbidden. He was attracted to the things that he should not have. But I just don't believe that he was not attracted to Israelite women. I believe that the reason why he looked at somebody else outside of him was because he did not want to be held responsible for what was on his life. Because if you get somebody that knows that you're a prophet, they're going to keep you in line. Hmm? If you get somebody that knows what you are supposed to be, they're going to pray and fast to make sure that you stay where you are. But he chose somebody uh, that would not hold him accountable to who God says he was. Someone who was not going to hold him accountable to his consecration. A Nazarite was someone that was consecrated, meaning set apart only for God's use. And because he did not want to be set apart, he chose somebody that he knew was not going to hold him accountable. I'm done. 
Now, in this phase, the Bible says that he, he wants to marry the woman. And, 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 and after he wants to marry the woman, there was a, a little phase between the engagement and the marriage. And the Bible says that on his way down to the woman, that there was a lion that roared up against him. And the Bible said that the spirit of the Lord came up on Samson and he killed the lion with his bare hands. Now, the issue with this is you can always tell uh, how long you've been around something because the text declares that we already know that that a Nazarite was not supposed to be around anything dead. And not only that, he was already in disobedience because of the woman that he decided to marry. But just because he was in disobedience did not mean that the Spirit of the Lord was not with him. Hmm? The Spirit of the Lord still gave him what he needed in order to do his assignment. I'm going to come back around to that in a minute. The text declares uh, that after this moment, he comes back on his way to his parents' house, but he sees something strange. The Bible said that he sees the dead carcass uh, but he also sees something funny going around that dead carcass the text declares that he sees bees and then there was honey coming out of the dead carcass uh, now the bible says that he proceeds uh, to get the honey out of the dead carcass and begins to eat it now the problem that uh, the first question that i would have asked is I, if i was samson was how in the world can something sweet come out of something that's dead how in the world can something sweet come out of something that's dead? And this is the same way that the devil tricks us into doing things. He makes them look real sweet, huh? Uh, but the reality is that they are dead on the inside. Come on. Oh, he makes that relationship look real sweet. Until you get in it and realize how in the world did I get to where I am? How can something good come out of something that's dead? Oh, God. Oh. The text declares believers that he does the unthinkable. He takes this honey and brings it back to his parents' house. Now, I thought that this was funny because immediately I rose on the defense and said that it is the parent that has to watch what comes in their home. Mm -mm. Uh, but the child also has to be responsible for what it is that they are bringing into the house. Oh, God. And the Bible says that his, he never tells his parents where it comes from hmm. meaning that he held a secret hmm. and wherever there are secrets there are strongholds hmm. I said whenever the enemy can keep a secret over you there will always be a stronghold something that does not want to lose its grip on you huh? Uh, but you got to understand that that is where the devil operates uh, if he can keep you keeping secrets uh, he can keep you in darkness uh, if he can keep you keeping secrets uh, you got to do like some of us do I tell all on myself the devil ain't got to tell on me I'll tell you where I got it from I'll tell you where I've been I'll tell you where I went because ain't nobody holding nothing hostage over me I tell on myself somebody shout yes I got to go because I feel my preach coming on I got a few minutes and I'm done the text the text the text Oh, God, the text declares that that after this moment, after he eats this honey, after uh, what I what, what I want to point out uh, very specifically about Samson is that we understand uh, that his appetite or his 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 love for his appetite, his love for the forbidden overrode his assignment eventually. Hmm? And this is why you have to be careful about what it is that you crave. Huh? God is not tripping about you having an appetite. He's tripping about what you have an appetite for and what you are not acknowledging no 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 the bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses but if you are going to lie about your weakness where in the world is he supposed to be your strength oh god the bible says he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled and ain't that you hungry the problem is what are you hungry for oh god the bible said that in the fullness in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy we can always tell uh, what you've been in the presence of based of what you are full of we can always tell what you've been in the presence of based off of what comes out of your mouth based off of what you regurgitate I'm done the Bible says that 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 
He is in this deconstruction, this self, uh, uh, this self, uh, uh, the deformating phase where he is not able to even see how far along he is. I want to pay attention to something in verse eight, and it says, uh, the Bible says that, and after a time, after a time, this is after a time being in Philistine territory. Mind you, these are the same people that hate him. These are the same people that want to destroy him. But because he is so lonely, because he is the first of his kind. And the only of his kind. Nobody is holding him accountable to what he is. Now, I want to go now to uh, chapter 16 where we're uh, going to go into the conclusion of the matter. Where chapter 16, the Bible says that he goes with the harlot in a place called Gaza, which is in Philistine territory. But something specific that we got to point out here is that he, the Bible says that he meets a woman and falls in love with a woman named Delilah who lived in a valley Call Sarek. Rewind it. He meets, he falls in love with a woman, the Bible says, who lives in the valley of Sarek. Now, a valley is a low place between two mountains. It looks like the most desolate part of the land, but it is the most fertile part of the land because the water from the mountains comes down and fertilizes that valley. But this particular valley is something special about this valley. Hmm? Uh, 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 the Bible says that the valley of Sarek, you look at the word Sarek, it literally means choice vines. Hmm? Uh, so he is in a place, and we know that vines, after a while, red grapes and red grapes turn into wine. He is literally getting into a place uh, that has the ability to to intoxicate him. Hmm? Don't you think it's strange that he lives in a place that, that he meets a woman? Mind you, he doesn't live in a valley, but he falls in love with a woman who is not visiting a valley. He falls in love with somebody who lives in a low place. This is why believers, my college students, you have to be careful about who it is that you hook up with when you're feeling low about yourself. You don't live in a valley. You are just visiting this place because you're a little depressed. You're a little homesick. You don't belong here. But the problem is we make permanent decisions of living in places and hooking up with people who don't, who don't visit the valley. The Bible said she lived there. The problem with that is when you decide that you are no longer in this valley, when you decide that it's time for you to go back to the mountain, you are trying to bring valley people with you. And you wonder why when you try to bring them up, they suffocate. And then if they can't suffocate, they'll suffocate you. There are even some animals that cannot exist beyond a certain altitude because their lungs do not have the capacity to handle what's on the top. Can I help you? There are people in your life right now that cannot handle the altitude of where you are. And you're wondering why low people only vibe when it's gossip. They only vibe when it's stuff going on. They only vibe when it's mess. And God said, you will never be able to bring them up because you visit here they live here and there is nothing on you that will ever that will be able to bring them up to another place you don't belong in a valley you are just walking through prove it in the text the bible says in psalm 23 yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you ain't supposed to sit in no valley and there are some of us that are making permanent decisions in a place that was designed for you to walk through oh God, look at somebody and tell them you got to walk through. I got to calm down. You got to walk through that valley. Oh, God, the text, I'm done. Hmm. The text declares that, 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 that after this, after going through and, and, and walking through this valley, he says he falls in love with a woman named Delilah who lives in a valley. The valley's name is Sarek. It means choice vines. Vines, grapes, grapes, wines. He is getting ready to prophetically, he doesn't even know that he's walking into a place where he's getting ready to be intoxicated. And you know what happens when you intoxicate. You don't think straight when you intoxicate. Everybody looks good when the lights are off. Come on somebody. You can't tell what's what when you are intoxicated because what is in you, the Bible said you got to be sober minded. Oh God, he could not recognize what was getting ready to happen to him because he was intoxicated, meaning 
he was outside of the presence of the Lord. He was operating outside of his consecration. And when you decide to operate outside of a place that God never intended for you to operate in, you become intoxicated with things that God never sustained. God never meant for you to be intoxicated with. I got to go to my clothes and then I'm done. The text declares believers uh, that the Philistines come to Delilah hmm, and they say, listen, we can't stand this man. Hmm, I need you to find out what it is that makes him weak and then I'll give you money for it. Can I help you? If the enemy cannot get you to fall, he'll, he'll cause you to fall in love with somebody who has the influence to make you fall. If he can't get you to mess up, he'll cause you to fall in love with somebody who always messes up, which then has the intoxicating influence over you to cause you to do things that you said you would never do. I don't drink. I don't ever drink. And you with a drinker and now what you doing? Drinking. Come on, somebody. He will always cause you to fall in love with somebody who your weakness. And this is the problem with hanging around enemies. I know people say, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But the problem with Samson hanging around his enemies, Dr. Bryant, is his enemies after a while understood where his weakness was. If you pay attention in the text, the only time that Samson really got enraged, the only time he really got in trouble was behind a woman. Was behind his weakness. And if you give your enemies insight into your life long enough, they will recognize what it is that'll make you weak and they'll put it in your face. Come on, somebody. And then they'll use it against you. I can hear nothing in this church. I got to go. The Bible says that uh, she begins to talk to Samson and, and, and she begins to converse with him and, and she then begins to ask him some questions. She says, Samson, uh, babe, tell me here where it is, uh, uh, why? Tell me what your secret is that makes you so strong. You know the story, Samson lies to her, but he tells her some random thing and then she yells out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you and what he he does is he breaks free hmm? now the second time she's still kind of mad about it but she begins to ask him the same question she says Samson the Philistines are upon you you've got to tell me uh, she wants to know what makes you so strong the Bible says he says something else and again the presence of the Lord is still with him because when she yells out the Philistines are upon you he breaks free again now by the third time if I was Samson I would have started asking questions so Mm -hmm. But because he is all in the class by himself and because nobody really checks him, if you look at the text, he never fought with anybody. He only, uh, he never called on the armies. He, he was an army by himself, meaning he never had to have accountability because he was the one fighting all of the battles. Nobody ever told him nothing about himself. But the problem is that some of us, not us, the church down the street, don't want to be accountable. But what you don't realize is accountability keeps you from going crazy your accountability keeps you from having people in your life that really want to destroy you your accountability keeps you from becoming so intoxicated that you can't realize that you are sleeping with an enemy mm -hmm. oh God the Bible declares that she asks him again and she puts a little more on it this time she puts it on that thick and again he responds the same way now Samson you have to recognize how lonely and desperate he really was because sane people don't keep allowing people to bite them if a snake is a snake it's gonna be a snake with you or a snake without you huh but you got to realize that when you are lonely the desperation will make you do anything oh God prove it in the text the Bible says in Proverbs 27 he says a fool a fool soul loathes the honeycomb but to the bitter soul even but to the bitter uh, but to the hungry soul even even bitter things are sweet. In other words, what he's saying is, uh, is be, if, if I'm full of God, if I'm full of, of, of the presence of God, if I'm full of the word of God, uh, even the sweet thing I won't want.
on because I'm already full. But when you are empty and when you are desperate, even the nasty stuff, you go eat because that's all that's in front of you. You've got to learn how to open up your eyes and see what's in front of you. I got to go. The Bible said that she asked him for the final time. She says, Samson, I'm sick of going back and forth with you. The Bible literally says that she nags him to death. You know, women, we got that kind of bad. She nags him until the point to where he tells the truth. The Bible says that she knew at that time that he told her all of the truth. When she, oh God, I got to go. When she tells him the truth, uh, the Bible says that she yells out a final time. Now, before this happens, the Bible says that uh, he falls asleep, right? She says, he says, listen, I'm a Nazarite. I've been consecrated to God from the womb. If you shave my head, I'll become weak like any other man. She knew she told him the truth. The Bible says that she, he falls asleep on her legs. He falls asleep on her lap. Can I help you? You got to watch them laps because them laps are dangerous. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. No. No, 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 prove it in the text. Understand uh, that you remember when, when you were little and, and you did something and you fell and your mother or your father would say, come here and sit on my lap. The lap is a place that is designed to make you feel comfortable. Understand that some of us, when, 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 when Christmas time comes around, we tell our children to go sit on a stranger's lap and begin to tell them all of your secrets of what it is that you really want. The lap is designed to make you feel comfortable enough to tell all of your secrets. The lap is the place of vulnerability. And if you are not careful, the vulnerability will kill you because the lap that you're laying in is really an enemy. Look at somebody and tell them, watch them laps. Watch them laps. <laughs> we could go further, but I'm going to leave it right there. Watch. I'm done. Watch them laps now. Oh, God. You got to watch them laps now, believers. The Bible said that after this, she yells out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. After this moment now, he says, I'll just break free like I did the last time. The problem was he did not recognize that the spirit of the Lord had already left him. What are you trying to say? That there is only so far that God would allow you to go before he leaves you to yourself. Uh, can I help you? Gifts and callings come without repentance. But the presence of the Lord is not guaranteed. The only way that I can obtain the presence of the Lord is by staying in a place of consecration. I know what the world says. We don't need all that prayer. We don't, we don't need all that church. But honey, it is prayer that has kept me anchored. It is consecration that has kept my mind. And I can't walk away now just because God is doing something in my life. Do me a favor and look at somebody and say, neighbor, I won't die here. I got to leave you now because I got four minutes and I'm done. The text declares that after this moment, she yells out. The thing that they do is they capture him and the first thing they do is they cut, they cloud, uh, pluck his eyes out. I said, Lord, why they have to touch the man's eyes? He said it was his eyes that got him in trouble in the first place. So God said, I'll obstruct your vision until you can hear me better. I'll obstruct what you see so that you can hear what I'm trying to say. The Bible said that after this, he becomes a grinder in the prison. Now we are on the final phase of his life where he is in redemption. Redemption means to be brought back to your rightful place. Now we are in a phase where he is in redemption. The Bible says he is blind, but he is a grinder in the prison. And why? While he is a grinder is in prison something peculiar happens the bible said that his hair begins to grow back can i help you all oh, the hair is only a symbolization of the consecration and sometimes god will make it look like your enemies have won over you sometimes god will make it look like you've been defeated but your hair is getting ready to grow back sometimes he has to pull you into a place where you are by yourself so that you can hear him again. Samson had to repent. Samson had to get his life together because he knew that he had failed at what he did and what God had called him to do. But I came to tell about 12 people in here that God is getting ready to make sure that your hair is getting ready to grow back. The Bible declares that while he is on his way, the text declares that the Philistines 
Philistines are having a party. It's about 3,000 of them there. And when they have this party, uh, they want to bring Samson out. And the Bible says that Samson asked the little boy to put him in between two pillars. Yes, God. And when he asks him to put him between the pillars, the text declares that he prays a prayer. And he says, Lord, remember me. What are you trying to say? That after you repent, he'll give you your strength back. I got to leave you alone. But before I do, I got to tell you what happens. The Bible declares that after this moment, after he is stuck between the pillars, he prays a prayer and begins to talk to God. And then he lets him know. He says, anoint me one more time. I just want to know if there is anybody in the building that will lift up your hands and ask God to anoint you one more time. I got to leave you alone. But before I do, I got to tell you what happens now. The Bible declares that on that day, Samson killed more Philistines than he had killed in his entire life. But the problem is, is that he died too. What are you trying to say? That there are some of us in here that find ourselves like Samson. But I came to tell you that you ain't got to die here. You still got something on your life that God wants to perform. Look at somebody for the last time and say, neighbor, you won't die here. You won't die in Delilah's lap. You won't die in the place that is trying to destroy you. You want to touch yourself and say, self, you ain't going to die here. I dare everybody in the building just begin to lift your hands and begin to ask God to do it for you again. I want to be anointed again. I want to be touched again. I want you to use me again. I can't die in this. I don't want to die in a lap. I don't want to die an alcoholic. I don't want to die suicidal. I can't afford to die here because there is something on your life that is designed to be a deliverer. I got to leave you alone. Samson's name means distinguished, strong. Delilah's name means feeble and weak. There's one question that I've got to ask you, and I'm going to my close. Yes, Lord, what weak people do you keep giving your strength to? What weak people do you keep allowing in your space of vulnerability that will cause you to become intoxicated to forget about the assignment on your life? I got to go to my close, but for the next 30 seconds, I dare you to clap your hands and open up your mouth and begin to give God praise for another chance, another chance to get right, another chance to live holy, another chance to be used by God. Clap your and open up your mouth and begin to tell God thank you for what he's doing in your life thank you for keeping me thank you for not destroying me when I should have died I was guilty but you kept me cause there's a plan on my life shout yeah I can't die here. Somebody shout that out loud. I can't die right here. There's too much over my life. There's too much promise. There's still too much untapped potential for you to die right where you are. I need you to give God glory for this amazing woman of God. You can't die here. Everything that has been promised over your life has not yet come to pass. You can't die here. There's too much glory that God wants to reveal. You can't die here. Unhappy and bitter, alone and broke. You can't die here. There's more for your life. Those of you who know your funeral just got canceled, would you give God glory right there? You can't die here. 
3,000 people died in the Colosseum that day. They laughed at Samson. They thought it was the end of them. But what the writer neglected to tell you is Delilah is in the stadium. I need you to know that the spirit of whoever conspired for your downfall is about to be crushed. Whoever was taking delight at your lowest moment is getting ready to see you rise to your highest height. Whoever voted against you is getting ready to have egg on their face. They meant it for evil, but God is getting ready to work it out for your good. I can't hear nobody. This is the day the Lord has made. We got to rejoice and be glad in it because you can't die here. Halloween is an amazing day because demons always have to wear masks. Did you hear what I just said? Demons always have to wear a mask because they don't like who they really are. I'm telling you on this day, this woman of God flew all the way from Texas because it's time for you to take the mask off. God is knocking on the door of your heart, knocking on the door of your life, asking you, are you prepared not to die? Are you prepared for eternal life? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I need for you to get saved today. I want you to give your life over to God on today. This woman of God, I'm telling you, I got to go back and listen to that again. I'm, I, 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 I'm trying to pull myself together. I look like I'm all right. Uh, but I'm telling you, that, that, that woman of God uh, blessed my socks off on today. And I really believe that she was designed to speak to you, to speak to your children, uh, to speak to your family, to speak to your household. Can I say this? To speak to who your day day. Because you got too many people trying to make you live in a valley when you are anointed for a high place. I want you to be a part of this amazing ministry. I want you to be connected uh, to New Birth. I am believing you are not here by accident or coincidence. You have logged on today because of divine providence. The same power that is in this room is now coming through the screen and is going to meet you right where it is that you are. In order for you to get saved, in order for you to join the church, all of the prompts are below me even in this moment. I am just uh, amazed at God's grace. I'm stupefied by his mercy. I need you to do me a favor. Our emerging generations is endeavoring to make an impact into the hardest to reach demographic in the nation. Uh, those who have given up on church and, quite frankly, have given up on God. I need you to do me a favor, please. They don't ask for much. Our emerging generation only takes over on Fifth Sunday. Uh, but I need you to sow a seed into this generation. Uh, you already saw that they're trying to secure plane tickets for young people to go back home for the holidays. I've already shared with you that this week they were able to release $8 million worth of scholarships. Uh, for those who are trying to make a better way and a better life for themselves. I need you to please, right now, I want you to sow into emerging generations. I want you to give a gift into them on this day. Uh, because I believe the children are the future. Uh, I believe, here it is, if we don't have young people involved in the church today, there'll be no church tomorrow. Uh, but I am excited for this generation that loves God and is going to be the safeguarders of his blessed church. Do me a favor. Would you give God glory for all of our young people, for all of our young adults? I know it's emerging generation, youth, young adult day, millennial day, uh, but I, I got to give a special shout out, and I need those of you who are in the studio uh, to help me in doing it. Today is my mother's 75th birthday, uh, and I, I want to just overwhelm her. I, I want to shower her uh, with love on this day. Let her know that she is valued 
uh, that she is celebrated and she is appreciated. Uh, this afternoon, as soon as service is over, I need you to join me at the new Black Wall Street Market. Uh, we opened yesterday and 5,000 people walked through the door of the new Black Wall Street Market. We're open again today from 11 until 8. 11 until 8. And we'll be open every day going forward. Our official grand opening is on Black Friday. Black Friday, we open at 9 a.m. We don't want you to spend all your money at Target and Walmart and Best Buy and Macy's, but let's circulate dollars within our community uh, so that we can do something uh, majestic uh, in the name of our God. Uh, for our guests who have shared, our guest psalmist, our guest poet, our guest preacher, let's give God some praise for all of them. For our emerging generations, Pastor, Pastor Kariana Turner, give God some praise for her. Bless the Lord. I am so grateful. I am uh, delighted. Uh, you have uh, met my daughters except for my oldest one, uh, and she is here with us on the day. Topaz, uh, Brian, I want you to... Uh, I want you to know and to uh, meet her absolutely brilliant, amazingly anointed. She carries the mantle uh, for our family, and I am excited about the future of the gospel and the future of the body of Christ and the future of our family. Rest in this amazing uh, young lady, brilliant and beautiful and bold. I'm, I'm just amazed. Uh, at how God has uh, kept his hand on our life. She just graduated uh, from school two months ago. Amen. And uh, is going on back to school. Uh, and I'm uh, just excited. I want her to give our closing prayer uh, on this day. Tuesday, I'll be back uh, for Bible study. The following Tuesday, I'll be in Turks. This Tuesday, I'll be here. And whatever Tuesday, y'all need me in Hawaii. I, I just want to put it out there. I want it to matter. Whatever you don't do by faith is lust. I'm speaking this by faith that God uh, wants me in Hawaii. Uh, would you lift up that hand? Let's receive our closing prayer, Minister Topaz Bryant. Mega and merciful God, we come to you on October 31st, coming to you in regards of November. God, we pray that that month will be a month of extraordinary miracles. Somebody under the sound of my voice is being drained by bills, being drained by situationships, being drained by exes. But God, I ask that you will intervene and mess up the schedule, that you will drag them away from their distraction and get them to where they need to be. Somebody wants one thing, but God, we need some people that will understand Drake's lyrics. Drake said, I'm too sexy for this, but I want to remix it and say, I'm too called for this. Somebody under the sound of my voice is too called to go backwards. Somebody under the sound of my voice is going to change the country. But God, I'm asking right now that you become real and relevant. We don't need just another preacher, but God, we need an experience. So God, flood the homes, God. Give them visions, give them dreams. We need you right now. The word is a little crazy, but God, you're still good. You're good even when things ain't going good. You're good. Even when things are not meeting, you're good. And you will make a way. And we believe that you'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. Yeah, you'll be a friend in the lonely room. Yeah, you'll be a doctor in the sick room. You can heal, set free, and deliver. And no weapon formed against this generation and even the existing generations will be able to prosper. We're declaring healing. We're declaring revival. And God, we thank you for bridging the gap. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to stay tuned for our announcements. See what God is doing. Know that God is getting ready to bless you. And tell yourself all week, I cannot die here. God bless you. Hey, New Birth, it's time for our video announcements. Thank you for your commitment to our bond giving campaign. The outcome of our campaigns change lives. If you have not made your Bond 700 commitment, it's not too late to participate. Make your commitment today and then have the faith to follow through by honoring that promise. Let us pray together that New Birth will not only meet our goal, but surpass it in a mighty, supernatural way. Please visit 
visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash bond 700 for more information. Have you ever dreamed of visiting the Holy Land? Well, this is your time. Join Dr. Bryant on an amazing 10-day Christmas journey to the Holy Land, November 27th through December 6th, 2022. Imagine standing in Nativity Square and celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while singing and listening to a powerful Christmas message from Dr. Bryant. Please register via the link on your screen. The deposit deadline is quickly approaching. FSNB has partnered with our King's Table Food Ministry to help feed the community this holiday season. Non-perishable food item boxes are located inside the Centerville, Conyers, and Covington Walmart Supercenters through November 19th. Shop for the house, then donate an item or two before you leave the store. We are stronger together. Donate today to help fill the need. Welcome new members. We invite you to join our virtual new members orientation class on Saturday, November 6th at 10 a.m. We are excited that you chose new birth and Dr. Bryant looks forward to being your new pastor. We are honored to serve you and lead you on the journey of growth and discipleship. Please visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash events to register. Our new birth bereavement ministry presents dealing with holiday grief on Wednesday, November 10th at 7 p.m. The number of people who have lost loved ones this year because of the global pandemic is staggering. People need the proper tools to understand how to process grief. This seminar will provide needed support and guidance to those who struggle with the grief of losing loved ones. Register via the link on your screen. Can your family afford to bury you? Please join us for this pre-need symposium on Thursday, November 18th at 7 p.m. The average funeral service costs more than $8,000 and many families have not prepared for this expense, nor have they put proper insurance in place to pay for the funerals of their loved ones. This symposium will provide you with a set of useful resources and contacts you may use so that your families are better prepared for these costly and often unexpected events. Please register using the link on your screen. And that's going to do it for this week's video announcements.